Welcome to Connection Ministries Summer Friendship Gathering Training Series for Volunteers. This episode provides biblical insight for preparing the day two lesson. Thank you for your willingness to lead the day two large group Bible lesson. This episode will offer some insights and our objectives for this lesson. We appreciate your willingness to review these training materials. As you prepare your lesson, a good place to start is to pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you insight and direction. You'll also find an illustrated sample video for this day two lesson, along with other Summer Friendship Gathering training videos. You are encouraged to watch this video as you plan your lesson. There is more detailed information for preparing this lesson in the Large Group Leader's Guide that can be found on the link next to this video. The theme for this year's Summer Friendship Gathering is He is Worthy. Why do you think we go to church and participate in church activities? Is it a social club where we go to see our friends? Do we go because we've been taught it's the right thing to do? Or because it's just fun? Coming to a summer friendship gathering is a fun thing to do. It is a great time to be with friends and a fruit food is pretty good too. But the best reason to be at church is that it's a special time to worship and praise God. Over these next three days, we will see how God called Moses to lead his chosen people, the Israelites, out of slavery and into the promised land. Every step of the way, the Lord showed Moses that God is worthy because of his holiness, his power, and his love toward his people. God wants to show us also that he is a holy God, an all-powerful God and a loving God who will never leave us. God is truly worthy of our worship and praise. It's what we were made for. Our theme verse for these three lessons is found in Revelation 5.12. He is worthy to receive honor and glory and praise. We learned on day one that God is worthy or deserving of all our praise and worship because he is holy. Moses learned this when God spoke to him in the burning bush. There is no one more holy or perfect than God. God wanted a relationship with Moses. God also wants a relationship with us. We also learned that God had a mission for Moses to let God's people go. And God promised Moses he would go with him. God promises that he will go with us also. Today, we will see that God is worthy of our praise and worship because He is powerful. We will learn how God's power working through Moses freed His people and led them through the desert to the land He promised Abraham 400 years earlier, even when their way seemed impossible. Ask the group, do you remember our buzzword from yesterday? Yes, He is worthy. Let's practice. On day one, we learned that God is holy. He is worthy. Today, we will learn that God is powerful. He is worthy. On day three, we will learn that God is loving. He is worthy. Good job. Our Bible verse for today comes from Ephesians 3.20. God is able to do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. He does everything by His power that is working in us. Did you know God has power over His whole creation, the weather, the rulers of the nation, and the hearts of the people? God has power over everything, and there is nothing He can't do. There is nothing that is impossible for God. God demonstrated his powerful love for the Israelites even when their situation looked impossible. But God was there every step of the way right with them. God kept his promise and delivered his people from slavery. First, God showed his power by sending plagues on Egypt. The plagues were so bad that the Egyptians begged the Israelites to leave their country. They even gave them gold and riches so they would leave. 
God's people marched out of Egypt and were on their way to the Promised Land. After seeing His great power, they put their trust in Him and worshipped Him. Have you ever been in a bad situation where things seemed impossible? Maybe you thought it couldn't get any worse than this. Every time you saw a little bit of hope, something else comes along and all your hope is gone. Well, you're not alone. The Israelites felt the same way after God led them out of Egypt to freedom. This would be a good time to pause and ask if they've ever been in a bad situation or an impossible situation. How did they feel? Were they scared? Did they panic? Maybe they even cried or got angry. In Exodus 13, 20, it says, the people camped at the edge of the desert. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud. It guided them on their way. At night, he led them with a pillar of fire. It gave them light so they could travel by day or by night. God didn't just let his children wander around not knowing where to go. Just imagine being guided by a giant column of clouds every day or fire every night. Wherever the pillar was, that's where God was. God was showing his people the way through the desert. God was protecting them like a shield protects a warrior. You may want to ask, how did God lead his people? What are some of the ways God leads you? Does he lead us by a pillar of cloud or fire? Probably not. Give them time to answer with a few ways God may lead us today. The passage continues. Then the Lord spoke to Moses. He said, tell the people of Israel to turn back. They must camp by the sea. Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around in the land. They don't know which way to go. The desert is all around them. I will make Pharaoh stubborn. He will chase them but I will gain glory for myself because of what will happen to Pharaoh and his whole army. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites camped by the Red Sea. You may want to note that there was a shorter, more direct way to the promised land. So this didn't make sense to the Israelites, but God knew best. God was setting a trap for the Egyptian army. God also wanted the Israelites to see His glory. God wanted to show them that He is all-powerful so they would trust Him and worship Him. God's plans always make sense, even when it doesn't make sense to us. God always has a purpose for everything He does. He wants us to trust His ways and not ours. When we trust God to lead us in the right direction, he gives us a peace in our hearts, even when things don't make sense. You may want to take some time here and just read Deuteronomy 32, 4. He is the rock. His works are perfect. All his ways are right. He is faithful. He doesn't do anything wrong. So the Lord made Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, stubborn. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen and troops chased them. They caught up with the Israelites as they camped by the sea. The Israelites were terrified. They cried out to the Lord. They said, Moses, why did you bring us to the desert to die? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die here in the desert. The Israelites didn't think their lives could get any worse. It was bad enough in Egypt and now everything was hopeless. Pharaoh and his army were behind them and the Red Sea was in front of them. There was no way out. It looked like God put them in between a rock and a hard place. When they realized they were doomed, they cried out to the Lord. They had no way to escape. They even wished they could have stayed in Egypt as slaves. They still could not trust God and his power. But God is all knowing and all powerful and he always has a purpose and a plan. This would be a good place to ask, have you ever felt like you were between a rock and a hard place where it seemed impossible? What did you do? Did you cry out to God to help you? God wants us to cry out to Him when we are afraid, when we are hurt, or when things seem too big for us. 
God is always with us and ready to help us. He wants us to trust Him, even when things don't make sense. Sometimes it's in these circumstances we see just how powerful God is and how much He really loves and cares for us. Moses answered the people. He said, don't be afraid, stand firm. You will see how the Lord will save you today. Do you see those Egyptians? You will never see them again. The Lord will fight for you. Just be still. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, tell the people of Israel to move on. Hold out your walking stick. Reach out your hand over the Red Sea to divide the water. Then the people can go through the sea on dry ground. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. I will gain glory because of what will happen to Pharaoh and his chariots and his horsemen. Then Moses reached out his hand over the Red Sea. All that night, the Lord pushed the sea back with a strong east wind. He turned the sea into dry land. The waters were divided. The people of Israel went through the sea on dry ground. But the Egyptian army was still chasing them. They chased them right into the sea on dry ground. Then the Lord spoke to Moses. He said, reach out your hand over the sea. The waters will flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. So Moses reached out his hand over the sea. The waters flowed back and covered the chariots and the horsemen. It covered the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the people of Israel into the sea. Not one of the Egyptians was left. The Israelites saw the amazing power of the Lord showed against the Egyptians. So the Israelites had great respect for the Lord and put their trust in Him. They also put their trust in His servant, Moses. Wow. Now that's power. God wanted his people to see that only he can make impossible situations possible because only God can do it. He receives all the glory. There is no one more powerful than our God. You may want to take some time at this point to review the story. You can ask, what was the impossible thing that only God could do when he led the Israelites to the Red Sea? You can ask, do we trust in God's power when we are struggling? Or do we trust in ourselves or someone else? Every day we make decisions, and if we make them on our own, we may make mistakes. But through His power, God can lead us in the right direction. When we find ourselves in difficult and even impossible situations, we can trust that God will use His power to protect and save us. God's healing power can help when we are sick or hurting. His power can protect you when you are afraid. God will comfort you when you are sad or lonely. He brings peace when you are angry and unable to forgive. This would be a good place to go over today's Bible verse from Ephesians 3.20. God is able to do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. He does everything by His power that is working in us. Just like the Israelites in this story about Moses, God's power is at work in all of us. It's what keeps us alive, calms our fears, and fills our hearts with love. When the Israelites experienced God's powerful deliverance from Pharaoh's army, they sang a song of praise and worshiped the Lord. You may want to read the portion of the song that Moses and Miriam wrote to the Lord that is in the large group lesson guide for day two. When God delivers us from our impossible problems, we can also sing our own song of praise to Him. Because of God's powerful love for us, we proclaim He is worthy of all our worship and praise. You may want to close the day two lesson by singing a worship song to the Lord. There are four main points to be made in this lesson. It will be important that each of these points are covered in your lesson because they will be part of the small group discussion questions. The first point is, only God is worthy or deserving of all our worship and praise because He is powerful. 
God has power over his whole creation, the weather, the rulers of the nations, and the hearts of people. God has power over everything, and there is nothing he can't do. There is nothing that is impossible for God. The second point is, God uses his power to lead his people. God didn't just let the Israelites wander around not knowing where to go. He led them with a giant pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. It guided them on their way through the desert. God guides us also by the Holy Spirit when we put our trust in Jesus. He can lead us with his word, the Bible, pastors, parents, friends, or even things he puts in our path. And the third point is God uses his power to protect and save his people. God used Moses to show his power to push back the Red Sea. God turned the sea into dry land so his people could escape the Egyptian army. When the Egyptian army continued to chase them, God made the water flow back over the entire army. Not one of the Egyptians were left. Wow, now that's power. Only God could do that. The fourth point is, we need to trust in God's loving power and not our own because His ways are perfect. God wants us to trust Him when we are afraid or hurt or when things seem too big for us. God is always with us and ready to help us. He wants us to trust Him even when things don't make sense. Sometimes it's in these circumstances we see just how powerful God is and how much He really loves and cares for us. As you plan out the flow of your lesson, you can choose to use or not use the optional skit or object lessons. These resources can be used before your first telling of the story or afterwards. That's up to you. It's important to find more than one way to tell the story. Visuals and illustrations will help with learning. Most people learn best if the lesson combines different techniques or modes of learning. Remember, you have access to the PowerPoint slides of the story provided on the flash drive with the curriculum and on our website. You should also review the discussion leader's guide for the detailed questions and sub-questions that will be asked on day two. Before you finalize your lesson, be sure to incorporate these day two discussion questions into the large group Bible lesson. It is best to reinforce the main points with our adult friends. This helps them with a smoother transition into the small discussion group time, which follows the large group lesson. Thank you for your willingness to lead the day two lesson. You are encouraged to review the large group leader's guide and the notes for this presentation. The links can be found on the Connection Ministries website next to this training video. If you have any questions or need information, you can email us at connect at connection-ministries.org or call our office at 317-646-5067. If you would like to provide financial support for the Summer Friendship Gatherings, you can give online at connection-ministries.org.